I want to make this terrain, but I have no supplies. Hey, let's help out the planet and use some real trash. The snow is melting, revealing the filth within. Let's get to building. I'll take that. Thanks to all the litter bugs and terrible drivers for filling the city with junk, and the noble plow drivers for carefully collecting and stacking it with the snow. After all the hidden junk treasures have been seen, touched, and collected, I climb the B-roll staircase and toss them into this souvenir Marley's bucket for a bath. Bath time over. Look at this stuff. The obvious choice for the build is a generic sci-fi hallway. Is it Necromunda? Is it a ship or Space Hulk for boarding actions? We'll never know. Pop that dead lighter, then prune that car junk into more reasonable chunks. Ooh, check out the inside of this side mirror. Stick these reasonable chunks together, and that looks like a vent now. Off to a great start, and a great next step with this great in a broken semicircle opening. Pistolette and air hose combo for rapid adherence. Thematically, I need a CD, and eh, it's me. Plaster tape, aka grid roll, slap that down with the accelerated super glue and snip it to size. Floor buildage and then an angled wall, everything will be based off this. Convenient gothic shaped car plastic and this smaller arch thing for some inset detail into the gothic tech closet. Make a curved wall with this thing and the rest of that arched plastic as a corner. Hey, if you know car stuff, feel free to sound off in the comments. What have people been losing in the snowbanks in my neighborhood? A nice looking support beam that broke off that sewer grate looking wall from earlier. Who buys a Dollarama ratchet and throws this awesome packaging on the ground? Shame on you. And also, thank on you, because now I have it. Kapow. Boom. Perfect fit. Instant walkway. Slice. Prune this car plastic to cover the wedge building and then detail it with various stacked discs and cylinders, including a lens cap. Interesting piece from inside a lawn sprinkler that was absolutely decimated by the sidewalk plow. This year, the plows declared open warfare on the neighborhood. Big Doe won't get a free shout out, so we need paper to cover that up. This neat angled thing as a little step, sprinkler guts as a wall machine, and this hanging wall detail greeble made with whatever this is. Hey, what about over here? I will put a previously snipped prunage chunk along with what I think is a security tab. Now we have an interesting angled support kind of vignette happening. This will be a tech vent with the lighter top to add a neat grill. This corner needs a serious cylinder stack. Toy nut, something, plumbing thing, plug cap into loop thing. What is all this stuff? Definitely a car plug thing tucked in at a nice angle. I should remember this angle. An entire car flap chunk as a landing. Small grate. No idea what this cylinder was, but it fits here. Gotta go back to that angle and add in this plumbing valve piece. Green thing. And the thumb flicky roly from that dispatched lighter. Time to get a handle onto this lower edge. Literally. And also here on the side. Another part of that nuked sprinkler broken down into these bits. Here, lens cap railing, and here round pipe thing as the techno arch detail, a bit of snipped car plastic, and a curious cap to finish off the floor. It's Rivetosa, not Rivetosa. I use this anteater tongue super glue spout to place a tiny dollop, then slide the custom rivets into place. Low effort, low xylophone rivet application. Anywhere that's too flat or boring will get a few rivets. If a hole is boring, make it a vent. Boop. Wait, if this isn't an orc build, why do I have this handful of bolts? Oh, it's a gentle reminder to not forget the lore, because this video is sponsored by me? Make sure you never forget the lore with this hot new merch, available now. Stop being the target of ridicule as you forget the lore, because now you won't forget the lore. Purchase now. Link in description. Uh-oh, I accidentally used tattered garbage to build this, and now it's full of gaps but I can barely see anything. Ah, uh, oh, is that a pre-spackle prime? Now back by popular demand. Acrylic model paste is used to build up corners because it's tough and has excellent adhesion. Cover that Nissan logo and add a smooth transition down to the walkway. After that, I crack the spac. I gloop this into all the overly smooth surfaces and minor cracks. The final material appearance objective is aged metal. And while metal can crack, I I don't know, I just don't want cracked metal, okay? Once the glopped goops have cured, I shave and maybe also sand it down. Oh, 
There I go sanding again. With the gaps gone, it's time to add some final accoutrement. This is sci-fi, so it's gotta be tubes and, and cabling. I use these brand new hair elastics from the dollar store because finding a hair elastic in the gutter is somewhat rare. And the rarity is the only issue with picking up hair elastics from the street, okay? Weave and cram the elastics in, and also some garden wire for more variety, and even a bit of wire wire. Do you think the plain tubes are boring? Type O in the comments if you think they need these O's, and type OO if you saw this coming. Sliced soap tube donuts to add banding to the cables. Come on, that's a classic, and it instantly looks so cool. Now I take this fresh SB podge to defabric the texture of the cables. Uh, did I show the breakdown of this lighter? Well, it's got this neat long spring in it, and we're gonna use that to make a banded cable. A generic wire, toss the spring on, and boom. Sweet and flexible cable. A layer of SB podge, possibly not shown, will fill the space behind the spring, hiding the inner wire. It's all done now, and now it's also primed black. In order to treat the surface, I make a chunky paint using paint, podge, baking soda, and the brand new pre-Kickstarter exclusive SB varnish. This mixes together into almost like a crusty mustard. I guess I will coin the term crustard to describe it. Glop that crustard all over, then make a new batch, and this time add sand to make crustard deluxe. Apply that all over the lower section to give it that premium chunky rust look. Clean off your brush and... Get the mug. Time for a classic Necromunda green. I look at the last pot and let's try to match it. Various light blues, gloppy green, and brown. Wish me luck. Wow. Uh, I mean, t told you I could do it. Take your giant Necromunda brush that hasn't been used since this guy and... Crack it open. How often do you crack open a brush? Okay, apply and unify. Nice. I lighten up all of the cabling for future colors and then, well, I have the whiteout, I might as well stencil. In my previous builds, I've used one through five, so naturally let's go with seven. Sponge the stencil, also do some triangles and a caution stripe. Pick out a few yellow and red tubes and then it's time to weather. I'm leaving scrap metal and salty vinegar for a week or until something interesting happens. And now we wait. Well, it's been a week and something interesting happened. Diboja. That's right, I invented my own rust paint using actual rust and wow, nice. Get bent, dirty down. Now I gotta add a dark acrylic wash and oh man, I got so excited for the new custom rust paint that I forgot the fan favorite old school mat. Check out that spring-based cable. Tint and shade and recess, blah blah, we all know how washes work. And now we get the whole play set together. Make sure you get out into your neighborhood and help with spring cleanup. You might even end up with a sweet new terrain piece and I'll see you in the next epic build video. Look, my dog met a friendly raccoon. Want to see the dog? Support the channel? Get behind the scene previews and sophisticated Discord banter and credits in every video? That is available to you. Become an epic patron today.